What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna look at the tree view for Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at tree view, but before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books, one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna to start to look at the tree view and there is a lot of stuff we can do with tree view. And uh, so we're just gonna to start to kind of introduce it in this video and then in future videos, we'll do, we'll do some cooler stuff with it. And this is the tree view if you're not familiar with it. We've got these headers at the top and they glow when you hover over them. You can resize them, kind of move them around a little, right? You can click on rows and they highlight you can have parents, and if you click on here, children, you see this guy pops up underneath, right? All kinds of cool stuff. So this is great for like pulling stuff out of Excel or a database or adding stuff into a database and visualizing it as you go and just a zillion other things. So now this is a little bit more complicated than some of the widgets. I wouldn't call it hard. It's just slightly different than some of the widgets we've looked at so far in the sort of formatting of how we create this thing. It's not that alien but it is a little bit different. So that's what we're gonna take a look at in this video. So let's go ahead and close this. I've got a file called tree.py. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So I've just got our basic Kinter starter code that we always have, 500 by 500, main loop, all the good stuff. And the only thing different is this time I am right off the bat importing TTK. And the tree view widget is a TTK widget. It's probably one of the only ones we haven't really looked at yet. We've kind of looked at all the other TTK widgets. So we know that to, to use these guys, we just from Kinter import TTK and then we can sort of reference these guys. So the first thing we need to do is create a tree. So I'm gonna call this my tree, and this is gonna be a ttk.tree view, and the V is lowercase in view. You know, a lot of the times the second word in these widgets is uppercase, not so this time, it's lowercase. And where do we wanna put this? We just wanna put it in a root. So, okay. So when you're talking about these things, they're basically made up of columns, right? So we have to right off the bat define our columns. So let's go my underscore tree. And let me just comment this, define our columns. There we go. So let's go my tree. And then to do this, we set sort of like a Python list. And inside of here, we call columns. And then we can set that equal to a tuple with whatever our columns are gonna be. So I want name, I want um, an ID, I want, uh, let's see, favorite pizza. And that's probably good enough, just for example purposes. So we're gonna have three columns, name, ID, and favorite pizza. Now, I say three columns, but we're actually gonna have four columns. There's one really weird thing about this tree view in that it creates sort of a phantom column right at the beginning, or it makes you create a phantom column right at the beginning. So we're gonna have actually four columns but these are the main columns plus the phantom column, I'll call it. And we'll look at that in just a second. So, okay, let's now say format our columns. And to do that, we call my underscore tree dot column. And then inside of here, we pass a bunch of stuff. So right off the bat, like I said, we're gonna have a phantom column to begin with. And that is gonna be referenced as hashtag zero. And this is the number zero, not a capital O. This is a zero, like zero, one, two, three, zero. So, okay. That's just sort of the, the space this goes in. Or that's sort of the, the default thing that that column is called, I guess. And then we can set the width of this. And I'm gonna set it at, uh, for now, 120. And we'll see why in just a minute. A lot of times, if you're not using parent and children, Remember when I clicked that little plus sign in the parent in the child thing drop down below? If you don't have those, you can get rid of this column completely and you could just set the width to zero. But I'm gonna show you how to do parent and children uh, rows. So we'll have some space to do that. So that little check mark box, that little plus sign will have some space to show up, right? And we can set if we want a min width of 25. And this will have to do with when people can resize it. You know, we won't. We don't want them to resize it lower than 25. So, okay, that's that phantom column. Now we can knock out the rest of our columns. So let's go my tree dot column. And I'm just gonna one, two, three, because we've got three more columns. 
And we just name these guys. So the first one is going to be name. And I want to anchor this west. So, you know, when we pack things or grid things, we can anchor things. West is the far left side, right? So I want to anchor that there. And then we don't really have to, but we can give this a width. So I'll give this a width of, um, I don't know, let's say 120. And maybe you want to put a min width, maybe you don't. I'll just leave it off because we don't have to have that. So the next one is ID. And I want to anchor this one in the center because our IDs are numbers. And so the numbers will be like right in the center. So we'll anchor the, the column itself in the center too. And let's give this one a width of 80, let's say. And then finally, what do we have? Favorite pizza. Let's go ahead and anchor this guy also on West. And let's give this a width of what 120, let's say. Or we can get crazy and go 150. Yeah, 120 is fine. So, okay, we've got our columns set up, right? And that makes sense, dot column, right? That's so far so good. Now we need the headings. So let's create headings. And these are going to be those that bar at the very top. So if I pull this over again. That's going to be it says label, name, ID. That's this thing at the top that kind of changes colors as I hover around it. Right. And also it's where you can grab it to resize them. So that's the headings. Right. So, OK, we can create those. And that's also going to be my underscore tree. But this time it's dot heading. Right. So we're going to have four of these two, three, four. And the first one is that, again, that stupid ghost column that hashtag zero. And then the text for it, let's call this label. Or you could you could leave it blank if you wanted to, but we'll, we'll leave it label. And I'll show you after we've built this thing, what happens if we get rid of this thing? If we change the width of it to zero, for instance, and things like that, we'll play around with it. But for now, we'll just we'll just uh, see what it's all about here. So all uh, right, so label and then we also want to anchor this. I want to say West, right? So the next one is going to be a name and the text for this will be name. And I should say this part right here, this is where it's going to actually show up. So if you put, you know, customer name, then the header will be customer name. The heading itself might still be name, but the thing that shows up, the text that shows up is customer name. So we'll just leave this at name. And then again, I probably want to anchor this guy West. OK, and then here we have ID. And these and these really you need to be the same. So if you put like lowercase d, that would probably be wrong because up here we use capital D. So you might get an error. So it's case sensitive, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure. So let's go text equals. Uh, let's see, we want ID. And this one we want to anchor, of course, as we said, center. And finally, we have favorite pizza. And the text for that is going to be also favorite pizza. And we want to anchor this probably west. And if we want, we can play around with the anchors to see, you know, east is far right. Center is center, west is far left. So, okay, we've got our headings, we've got our columns. Now we just need to put some data in there. So let's go add data. And this, we just go my underscore tree dot insert. And we've seen insert before. So there are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five things you need to put in here, five attributes, right? So you can be very explicit, like I'm gonna be right now, or you could just put the thing. And I'll tell you what I mean in just a second. So the first thing is the parent. So where is this going to be? We want to put this in just double single quotes here, right? So the parent will be the main level, and that's just zero. If you want to start putting things inside of other things, you would change the parent, right? So if we have a parent child and we want to put it under the third thing for the parent here, we would put like three, right? And we'll look at that in a second. So parent is the first thing. Next, we want to put the index and the index is where do we want this to go in the list of things that we're putting up? And I'm just going to put end each one of these we want to put on the end. So the next one will go down on the end. So that's the second thing index. Uh, now we need an ID ID and I'll start here at zero and these need to be different. 
So the next one will be one, the next one after that will be two, three, four. I don't know that you even need to use numbers. I think you could do just about anything as long as it's unique, but numbers make sense. And then finally, well, not finally, we got two more things. So that's one, two, three. Now we need a text. And the text for this guy will be parent. And this text will actually show up in that phantom column. So if you don't want a phantom column, you can just put nothing there. But we're going to put a phantom column and I want it to say parent so that we can see the difference between parent and children. Uh, but we might take that out after that, after I show you that. So finally, then we have values. And the values is going to be a tuple. And inside of the tuple is going to be whatever you want. So our name is John. John's ID is one. John's favorite pizza is pepperoni. How do you spell pepperoni? Looks good. So, okay, that will work there. Uh, now we could uh, almost save this and run it. We also have to pack this guy. So let's go my tree dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of 20 just to push it down. You know, we always pack these guys pack to the screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it just to see if that one record worked. So we are Python tree dot pi. And if we come over here, we see it looks like it's worked. Name John, ID one. Notice the IDs are centered and everything else, else is anchored west, right? And we have it says parent there and there's the label. Like I said, if we got rid of that parent, and we could, it would, let's see, just look like this. Save this and run it. You see now it's empty there, right? But we're gonna have a little checkbox there because we're gonna add a child, but whatever. So, okay, so this video is getting a little bit long, so I'm just gonna paste in some data here. I'm just adding more records, basically. So these are all the same as the first one. They're all in the same parent, right? They're all in index N. I've given them each sort of sequential ID numbers or one, two, three, four, five. The text is the parent for all of them. And the only difference is I've just added new things. And you'll notice here, I've not, I put these in quotation marks. So you could put numbers as strings or actual numbers themselves. I want to show you that. And then basically I've just created more records here. So if we save this and let's give this guy a run, we see, okay, we've got our whole thing and it works. So that's how you do just strictly speaking, adding data in. Now really quickly, I'll show you how to add a child. So let's add something under John, right? So to do that, we could just come down here and let's go, add child. So here will be my underscore tree dot insert again, just like normal. But the parent is going to be different here. Right, but not right away. So really, what we want to do is add this normally. So in fact, I could just copy this whole thing. And let's just paste this in. So same parent, same index, the ID we will need to create, this will be six, uh, the text Let's change this text to child. And let's change this to Steve. Steve is number seven, or let's say 1.2, right? Because we're going to put it under one, right? So we'll change his ID to 1.2. And let's see, what does he like? He likes peppers. Is that a type of pizza topping? Peppers? Okay. He likes peppers on his pizza. So, okay, so we've created this record and it's at the end. But now we want to move it. So we just go my underscore tree dot move. And where do we want to move it? Well, first off, what is the thing we want to move? We want to move six. That's the ID right here. That's this ID, not this ID. This is part of the record. But this is the actual like node ID here, the six. Where do we want to put it? Well, we want to put it right underneath zero. So we would just go zero, or there we go, zero, and then also zero. So that should do the trick. Let's go ahead and save this. Let's run this guy. And we see now we have a little checkbox next to this one underneath John. When we click it, boom, this child sort of gets indented and put underneath it. There's Steve, Steve is 1.2, and he likes peppers. So that's how you can sort of embed things underneath, how you can have parent and children. Now, that's cool. You might want to do that. But now I want to show you how to get rid of all of this stuff. So we get rid of this phantom row, right? So let's head back over here. And let me just uh, kind of comment these two guys out. 
And let's see, all of these things that say parent, I don't want them to say anything now. Now, if we save this, that alone will make it a little better, right? We can see right off the bat, at least now this column is empty, but it's still kind of wonky, right? So we want to get rid of this whole label column. So how can we do that? Pretty simple. We just come up here to, let's see, where we formatted it. Let's put our width at zero, and that might do the trick. Let's save this and run it. We might have to make one more tweak, but that might do it. No, it didn't. It still sat, it still does label up there. So, all right, we still got to tinker with this. So let's see, right here for the text for our heading. Let's do that. And if we save this, this is still not going to work, but we can try it anyway, just for fun. Because the problem is here, there's still a gap here. And maybe you want a gap there for some reason, uh, but we don't have to have that gap. So to get rid of that, we can head over to our code. And where the column is here, we have a min width of 25. Well, for one, we need to get rid of that. So let's save this and run it and see what that did. Again, didn't really change anything. There's still that gap there. So all we need to do is add a stretch of no. Right? So if we save this, run it, that should do it, I do believe. And it does. Now we've got a nice, that column is gone. Name is sort of the first one listed. And uh, very cool. We can sort of resize these if we want. And very neat. So that's a sort of a sloppy way to do it. Obviously, you probably wouldn't want to do it quite that way for if you're pulling stuff out of a database or out of an Excel file. If you have millions of lines, millions of rows, you're obviously not going to want to come through here and my tree dot insert every single one of them, right? So let's pretend real quick that we have, we're pulling something out of a database. So let me just sort of, um, let's come up here and let me comment this stuff out. And let's say, let me paste this in. Let's say we have this stuff that we're pulling out of a database. So we've got, a Python list and inside of here, we've got records, right? This is kind of common. What we could do is just loop through all of these records. So let's start with a count, set that equal to zero because we're going to need to keep track of this. So we can go for record in data and data is this thing. And let's just for loop through each of these things. So we can go, well, actually, let's just come down here and copy one of these. Make it easier. I like easy paste this in. The parent will be nothing. The end will be this. This will be count. And so then after this, let's go count plus equals one. So every time we loop through there, we'll add one to the count. So it starts at zero, then it'll go to one, two, three, four, five, whatever. And each time it does, it'll assign a different number to this count, which is probably good. We want the text to be nothing. And we want the values to be Instead of explicitly putting each thing, let's just call that list. So that's going to be a record. And then that'll be the zeroth item, record, first item, and record, second item. Remember, lists start at zero. So if we look at our, our things, now each of these will be record. So record zero is John, record one is one, record two is pepperoni for each of these. As we loop through there, it'll just assign each of these things to each of these things, and it should spit it all out. So let's go ahead and save this and run it, see if that worked. Should. There we go. And just like before, we get the exact same outcome, but this way we obviously don't have to, you know, explicitly come down here and create a line of code every time we want to enter something in. So if you're pulling stuff out of a database, and we'll probably do that in the future video, or pulling stuff out of an Excel file, you're not going to want to explicitly do all of these. You'll do a loop of some sort and uh, just that easy to, to kind of swap those in. So that's the tree view widget. Very cool. I mean, there's just so much stuff you could do with this. It's so useful. I'm kind of surprised it's taken me this long to get around to explaining this because we could probably use this all those times we work with databases. 
but uh, I don't know, I just didn't think of it. So uh, tree view, again, we'll look at this in more detail on future videos, because like I said, there's all kinds of cool stuff you can do this with this and uh, should be fun. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.